Hi, uh, my name is Devaraj and welcome back to this series about bioenergetics. Uh, today I'm going to take a little bit of a diversion and talk a bit about insomnia because uh, people contact me and I've also lived 15 years in a leading spiritual community in the UK where there's some therapy going on and often people get insomnia when they arrive or sleep stuff starts to happen for them. So over the years I've learned quite a lot about insomnia and I've also had my own uh, issues with it more quite a long time ago. And so I thought it'd be nice to share a little bit what I know because uh, I see a lot of people busy with it, busy with this difficulty sleeping. So one thing uh, uh, I saw in like Men's Health magazine the other month was a little article about insomnia. And with all the usual kind of stuff that you see in these things, nothing wrong with it, but there's more that you can do. You know, it says, you know, switch off your smartphone or your computer a couple of hours before you sleep. Or well, this blue light isn't good. You know, if you start waking up in the middle of the night, get up and do something or read or something like that. It also talks a bit about, yeah, the right posture. And in the morning, even if you're really tired, just get up anyway. And I think that's all good advice. You know, I've seen all that work, but there's a few other little tricks that I've learned myself. And so one form of insomnia that I quite commonly see, there's two main forms that I, I see or people tell me about uh, as a therapist. And one is that the mind seems to not stop. You know, the thoughts are just going round and round and round and round and round and you just want to get off that hamster wheel, but you can't seem to get off. And it could be that you go try and go to sleep and you're just thinking a lot. Or quite often it's people wake up about two or three o'clock in the morning and their mind is mega busy. I get busy if I've had any stimulants, alcohol in particular. You know, I wake up at two in the morning and my mind's super busy for two hours. Now, something that you can do about this type of insomnia, you can treat this in my experience uh, yourself with a bit of bioenergetics. And one thing that when the attention is a lot in the mind, and just spinning around on thoughts, yes, there might be some underlying psychological content there that you can look at, but also just on an energetic level, it's probably a bit of a blockage around here in the throat. Because energetically, what's happened is your attention has come out of your body and it's gone into this mind world and it's kind of trapped there. And ideally, the attention probably would like to go back down the throat, into the body, into the belly, into the guts where it can naturally reside and where you will naturally feel relaxed. So but there's a bit of a blockage at the throat and it can't quite get in there. And so there's a few techniques you can use to start to reconnect. The simplest is uh, you can just sit up basically and do what's called a gag reflex. And uh, essentially that means sticking two fingers down your throat until you gag. You don't have to actually vomit, you know? And uh, I can demo very quickly what it looks like. If you've got uh, issues, a uh, former eating disorder or ongoing eating disorder, maybe gag reflex is not so good for you if it's going to trigger you in some way. But essentially, it just looks like. Mm. And sometimes there's this natural reflex in the throat. You know, British culture, like a lot of cultures, is not really into the gag reflex like it's really not a good thing but actually it's a very good thing assuming you don't have a background of eating disorders or some kind of you know throat problem and that will clear a bit energetically the throat you know if you do that five or six times just sitting up on the side of your bed it's not so good to do it lying down generally and then just lie down again and just feel you know do you feel more relaxed very often i feel and other people report to me when you've done the gag reflex five or six times you just feel like, wow, I'm just, my attention has come back into my body. I can feel my body again. And that's great. Another couple of exercises from bioenergetics that you can do just lying down. Let's make sure you can see me here. Uh, I think the easiest one is to, exp first to explain it sitting up. This is a bit of a funny one. But basically, energetically, it connects your throat with your base chakra, your ass down here. And essentially what you do is you lie on your back, which is obviously you're doing when you're sleeping anyway, and you make a little sucking motion using your tongue, which goes like, maybe I have to get a bit close to the camera for a moment. Like. It's not a, <laughs> it's a funny looking thing. It's not a, an easy movement at first, but when you practice a little bit, most people can get it. And at the same time as you do this sucking movement, you do in time, lying on your back, Let's get it so you can see my feet. You make your feet splay out a little bit. So I'm doing this.
and at the same time as doing that, there's three parts to it. You've got the sucking motion, you've got the feet movement, which isn't vital, you can do it without the feet movement, but you feel your ass, like you tighten it a little bit, or you just feel it. And usually quite soon, at some point, you'll feel like there's an energetic shift happening in your body. Stay with it, do it for five, 10 minutes, this little sucking motion, motion, and often that starts to rebalance your energy, clears your throat block, and you're, you just suddenly find, wow, I'm just sleepy, I'm really tired, I'm not, I'm not busy with all this thought stuff anymore, and you just fall back to sleep. So that's very handy. A slight variation in bioenergetics that you can do, or a uh, considerable variation, actually, is that you lie on your back as you are, and you do some pelvic rotation, basically. So, let's hope you can see me here. And essentially, what I'm lying here, and basically breathing in, I rotate my pelvis back, so my asshole goes towards the mattress, and breathing out, back the other way, like this. Pretty simple movement, and you, even if you're sleeping with a partner, you can usually get away with that one without pissing them off. The uh, sucking one tends to piss them off, and the gag reflex isn't too popular often either with partners. But uh, as you do this last pelvic rotation, you know, feel the pelvis as well. It starts to wake that area of the body up, and it encourages your awareness to come back into the body. So those are a few techniques you can use from the bed or near to the bed when you get insomnia. Another thing, another type of insomnia that I often hear reported is people literally just can't sleep. Just can't sleep. It's not that the mind is necessarily charging around uh, mentating or whatever they call it on some particular subject. It's just that you just can't sleep. And this is usually a kind of sentinel effect, I call it. It's like the mind is staying on the alert because there is fear, essentially. A bit unconscious, a bit below the surface, there's fear and there's, there's a sense that I need to stay awake. I need to stay awake. Often that's not so consciously understood. It feels just like you just can't sleep. Like you just can't sleep, you just have to stay awake. You just can't sleep and you try and sleep and it doesn't happen and you just stay awake and you just stay awake. And it's, you know, if it goes on uh, night after night, of course it's very, very disruptive to your whole life. But what you can do with this one is a bit more tricky. You know, it's, it's really happening because essentially the unconscious mind is starting to push something up an unresolved internal psychological issue, maybe from childhood or whatever. Something's coming up and there's a sense that it's not really being owned. It's a bit scary, this feeling. The, the depth of feeling there in the, in the body is a bit scary to the mind and it tends to project it as some sort of fear thing on the outside and keep in this central effect, sentinel effect. And essentially what you can do with this is start to do some, some level of basic therapy. Basically screaming is really, really great. It's not so easy to do in your home if you live uh, in close around other people. And it's good to do it initially with some kind of therapist uh, present who's used to these kind of techniques. Uh, the best uh, therapeutic technique I know for this is called flushing, which I'm not going to demo because one, you need another person with you. And two, it's a little bit edgy just for someone just to show on the internet video. I like to put a lot of stuff out on the internet, but I don't also want to go a little bit over the top in some therapeutic techniques. You need to learn them a little bit direct first hand. But you can seek that out. It was also known as bonding and it was created originally by a guy called Dan Casrail, a uh, New York based, or maybe German originally, uh, psychotherapist back in the 70s and developed by a man called Denis Sanchez Varesh uh, about 20 years later into a group therapeutic technique. But if you seek out flushing somewhere or this kind of a release technique where you're holding on to someone else in a sympathetic position, that can take insomnia away pretty damn quickly. Get in touch with me if you want to know more or if you're in the south south of the UK, uh, Dorset or Brighton area, and I can do a session so you can learn it, something like that. Anyway, okay, I hope this is a benefit to you if you've been involved, if you've been getting insomnia. insomnia. I'm thinking of doing some weekend workshops around this, uh, possibly later in 2017, so stay in touch. Okay, bye for now, and uh, I hope you have some good sleep. Cheers.